So here's how I built a multi six figure software as someone who can't code. So you guys can just completely copy it. Now, uh, you're probably wondering who is this guy and why is he just talking about his software? He's probably just another guy who's just selling a course or he just wants to make money by pretending that he's built a software company. You can see here, uh, I can't share up to date numbers for obvious reasons, but these are like the early launch numbers. In the first 60 days, I managed to scale it to $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue. So we're now at like multi six figures per year in annual recurring revenue. Uh, you can see here, this is like the first few days of launch. In literally like a two week period, two and a half thousand people signed up for the app, three and a half thousand pounds in monthly recurring revenue, uh, scaling it across multiple TikTok accounts. You can see these are like several interviews that I've done uh, with Mike Strives. I don't know if you guys know Mike Strives. You can see this is me here. This is me like testing out the MVP. This is a video of me testing it out. Some screenshots of the early adverts of my software, uh, chat IQ dot, and these are my current social media accounts. I'm gonna give you like a, a proper breakdown in like the overall strategy on how I did this, exactly what I did, how I scaled it, how I managed to build it and turn it from this basic MVP into uh, what it is today. Uh, and I'm gonna basically walk you through my marketing strategy, my overall strategy. Uh, the only thing I ask for you guys is if you are interested in this sort of stuff, you enjoy this content, uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below and check out my socials on Instagram. Back at the end of 2023, I had an idea for an app uh, and I didn't know how to start, didn't know how to code it, didn't know how to build it, didn't have anything. I had no money, no income, no job. I was basically unemployed for six months while I researched this idea. And then I had the idea for building a very, very basic chatbot. And essentially the idea of the chatbot was to help real estate agents qualify leads before booking in for sales calls or before booking in for calls. So essentially to help agencies qualify leads. Uh, and you can see this is the MVP that I built. Uh, and I ended up creating a basic version using a no-code platform called bubble.io. Uh, and I put together this, which looks pretty clunky, looks pretty bad. And at the time, ChatGPT's uh, completions API didn't exist. So I had to create my own conversational system that would uh, cache memory and all of this stuff. And it was a complete headache, but I managed to get a minimum viable product. Uh, this is the billing section that I built, which I was quite proud of. I thought it looked quite cool. There was a basic dashboard area where you could see the number of messages and also you could gather leads. Uh, so what I did is I ended up showing this to different businesses. You can see here, uh, I actually first branded it out as intuitus.ai, which is a totally stupid name. Uh, and I was just basically going through LinkedIn and showing people my product, what it does, what it can do to help them. And a lot of them were very, very interested, but I had nobody sign up because there are a few key problems. The most important thing was the amount of time to set it up. And my price was far too high because I had to set everybody's things up. The next thing that I did, I went away for two months and I built the next version. It wasn't anywhere near as good as I wanted it to be, uh, but it got the job done. And I was looking around on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and just seeing what people wanted. And the main thing was they wanted the ability to upload their own data to their own chatbots. So I built a very simple tool that would allow me to do it. We had the chatbot area dashboard, history, settings, uh, and support. Uh, it basically, what would happen is you could upload data. It looked like this. So you could train your chatbot with text. Uh, you could upload a file or you could train it on a website. And I had some really weird pricing at the start where you could get like 30 PDFs a month. You could train 30 websites a month. But at the end of the day, it meant people could just test it out and add extra knowledge to their chatbots. And it worked. And I basically created a video on TikTok and it was this video here and it managed to get 138,000 views in literally I think it was basically about 42 hours uh, so we managed to get hundreds of people seeing the products coming to the website and buying and signing up but in literally the first 24 hours uh, I managed to get 750 signups to the app uh, this is actually I ended up losing that Stripe account so this is like slightly later on because this video went viral on the 3rd of April my 25th birthday um, anyway, so that's what it looked like. And you can see this is what it looks like when you're looking at it on mobile. And it just looks really, really bad, really clunky. So I enjoyed like a very nice spike, very sharp viral uh, growth with the product right at the start. And one of the most important things that I realized was I needed to actually have a way to monetize this business. I spent six months without any income. And over that six months, I had obviously been spending everything on rent uh, and obviously a little bit of money on this product. Now, I developed the entire thing myself. I taught myself everything that I needed to know and I had a bit of a background in marketing. Um, so what I did is after that sort of initial viral spike, 
as I was still bringing on customers, I instantly added in a paywall, which meant if anybody wanted to use my product, they had to put in their card details and sign up for a free trial. So I wasn't charging anybody off the start. If they wanted to, they could actually cancel their subscription. But what ended up happening is loads of people kept paying. They kept their subscriptions and I managed to get, like I say, three and a half thousand pounds in monthly recurring revenue in the first month which was huge for me this was like a proper exponential growth and i was now able to take this completely full time and i did all of this literally just by promoting this on tiktok so the only platform i was promoting on was tiktok and again a lot of people asking me is this something that you can actually do b2b space can you market b2b products on tiktok and the answer is yes you just need to have a proper marketing strategy. If you think about it, you maybe run a business. I know I run a business. I've got friends who run businesses and they sometimes scroll through TikTok, right? So you just need to get in front of the right people. But equally, you can't just create boring content. And I managed to sort of hit the viral AI trend and every single video I posted started to hit. It was a product that everybody wanted and it was going insanely viral. So you can see these are just like a selection of some of them. But I needed something that would be more long term and that is this sort of mass scaling strategy, uh, which I'll go through in just a second. Um, I haven't spent a dime on ads. I think I ran maybe some Google keyword retargeting ads for the ChatIQ brand name at the start, but I stopped spending on that. I ended up running into a huge problem because for a very long period of time, I had a product that wasn't working and I was just pumping marketing, just creating this insane amount of traffic for my product, but I was just having a leaky bucket. Everyone who came in would try it and there was better competition out there. As people got uh, aware of what I was doing and as people saw the success of the product, lots of people tried to replicate the product as well. So I decided to stop marketing and focus on properly building out a new product. But I basically built uh, and upgraded the system a little bit. So you can see here, I started to improve the UI of it, started to make it look a little bit cleaner. Uh, I had like a proper playground area where you could talk to the chatbot, uh, but I still wasn't happy with how everything looked. I wasn't happy with the chatbot settings area. And basically at this time, you could just upload data, you could scrape a website and it would just turn it into a chatbot. And there was no easy way of removing data or adding training data or building multiple chatbots and customizing the design very much. So I wanted to uh, really focus on that. So I had around $10,000 in recurring revenue. So you can see here, I started to slow off 7,000 pounds in monthly recurring revenue. Everything started to slow down a little bit as I was working on the product and as marketing was stopping and as the viral potential of the product stopped working. And this is like the most crucial point because I realized at this point, I needed to find a way to sustain marketing and also improve the products quickly enough while learning how to build the product and code um, all at the same time before I lost all my recurring revenue and all of my customers. Uh, so at around, I think it was probably around June or July 2023, I set about redesigning and building version three of ChatIQ. And this is really where everything began to change for me. This is really where things started to snowball. Uh, I had a lot of knowledge now in how to build the app and everything up until this point was built using a no-code tool, bubble.io. But I needed something that was a lot more powerful that would allow me to create the tools that I needed and what my customers wanted. So I basically embarked on building uh, APIs using ChatGPT and using that to teach me how to code. So the goal was to turn as much of the product into custom code as possible. And at the time, I still couldn't afford a, a developer, right? Despite what my recurring revenue is, uh, an AI business still has quite large costs. I had to pay myself a salary uh, and I had a small marketing team creating content for me. So I didn't have time or money rather to invest in a developer. So I still had to do all of that myself. So you can see this is the design. I created a interface, which is no longer in chat IQ because nobody used it. But it was a chatbot that basically allowed people to talk to the chatbot and create their own chatbot. Kind of like what you see now with custom GPTs. Uh, you could create your own chat IQ bot. Uh, actually, before GPTs came out, this is like mm, uh, half a year, three quarters of a year before custom GPTs. Uh, and I was doing that right back at the start. Um, when you got in and once you created it, I then created a data feed. And this was huge for chat IQ. This is like one of the needle movers. One of the biggest things that I did was creating it like a file management system that you could build chatbots on top of. The biggest problem I saw with my product and competitors was you could just upload data and it would build you a chatbot. But I thought, what if I wanted to actually have more control over the chatbots that I built and the data that they're using? It makes more sense to upload the files first, so scrape a website or upload PDF files and text files, and then pick and choose which PDFs and which files I use in different chatbot builds. 
And this knowledge base is still live within chat IQ. So this is the chatbot area. You can see like the huge difference between the first version and the first chatbot I ever built uh, and also the, the new one. So we had like custom chats. I say we, it was literally just me. My brother helped me with some marketing right at the start. You could add or remove knowledge from your chatbot. It would show you the source information that it's using for its responses. Uh, and down here on the right was your actual chatbot that you could talk to. And this was, you know, this was basically the thing that I ran with for a good few months. Uh, until I checked my emails and I realized that a lot of people were churning from my app because of two main things. One was customization, how much you could customize your chatbot. At this time, the only thing that you could do was change the color of the, the responses and that was it. So uh, that was the first thing. And the second thing was the chatbot was incredibly slow at responding. It had to go ahead and read your entire website, find the necessary information and then respond. So I set about building uh, the version four, which as you can see, is a very big update over all of the other ones. Uh, this one is, so this is basically at this point, I've now got about 60% of this app written in custom code. Uh, everything that is difficult, everything that's not like user interface on this app is custom code. Um, and this was a huge update. There were a lot of bugs that I wanted to fix. And the goal of version four was to have a product that I would be happy with scaling and marketing. Uh, and I could now actually just focus exclusively on marketing and leave the development for a bit. So I kind of go through cycles of uh, marketing and developing. Uh, and you can see, so this, this was like the MVP where I'm marketing on LinkedIn and then I built this one. And then I went back to TikTok and I started posting content again. Uh, and then at the same time, sort of was just changing some UI. Then I went ahead and I built all of this. And when I built all of this, the only marketing that I was doing was posting a couple of videos here and there onto TikTok. Um, and I, you know, this may seem like a, a, a massive shiny success, overnight success, but it's almost 12 months now that this has been going. And you can see like the dramatic difference from the MVP to the final product that I have at the moment. And you know, I've still got a very long way to go. I've got a lot to learn. I've got a lot to do in terms of marketing and I've got thousands of more customers that I want to bring on. And there's like, this is still like, still very much in the infancy for me. So at this point, the business in terms of revenue was going through some big problems. I had, you know, spent a good three to six months just solely on developing and my focus was no longer on marketing. So a lot of those users that I had bought on were now either wanting to leave or churning. A lot of them decided to stay because they saw the rapid development of the product, but I had no longer, uh, no longer had that viral traffic coming in. And this is where like building proper marketing comes in. You need to find a system where you can reliably focus on other things and sort of step away for a couple of months and you can come back to it and you've still got a platform that you can build on so you don't have to start from scratch again. And I'm going to show you how I'm scaling marketing in just a second uh, using this strategy here, uh, which is kind of a cool one, which I'm testing out at the moment. But anyway, I then built the new version. So now in the new version, you've got this playground. It's much easier to build a chatbot and understand how to customize it. You can... Uh, uh, Sorry, you can change the design. Uh, so you've got like custom questions and I'll show you the app actually uh, now. So this is basically what it looks like when you go into the app. So you've got the design area where you can change uh, the intro message. So these here are the example questions. Um, you can upload custom logos. You can see I've given the chat IQ logo to change the language, change the colors. Uh, custom instructions are huge. So this is one of the biggest problems that I was facing. People didn't know how to stop hallucinations. Uh, and also you can add like contact details and all sorts of things. But support ticketing, this is one of the biggest features that I've added. And it's I think it's making quite a big difference at the moment to, uh, you can see I've already got two support tickets from my customers that I need to respond to. But you can see that basically now somebody can submit a support ticket under different categories that you can create so you can adjust the categories uh, and then it will create a support ticket and prioritize that support ticket for you uh, you can add or remove data here's a bit of faqs so basically when you first talk to your chatbot chatbot re re uh, replies are pretty slow so my internet's really slow here but now what happens is the more you talk to your chatbot the quicker it becomes so you can see that only took a few seconds to respond but now if i talk to it and say like i want to submit a support ticket if somebody's already asked that question before it's going to use the cached response to respond uh, why should i use chat iq and you can see in literally just a matter of seconds it's going to read the entire website 
and then it's going to respond to that question. Uh, if I don't like the response, I can always adjust the response by basically just updating the cache. I can remove the cache and also I can then submit a support ticket directly from within the chatbot. So there's a lot that's changed directly uh, and that's basically like the, the chatbot playground area. Uh, the knowledge base is exactly the same. Nothing has changed there. I just improved the web scraper. So the web scraper can now scrape up to, I think it's about 100 pages from any website. Uh, and I'm still improving that. And then this is what the chatbot ticketing system looks like. So you can select which chatbot you want to look at the tickets from. Uh, you can see this is one I just did an example of. Somebody submitted a support ticket. It tells me how long it's been since they've submitted. I can reply to that support ticket. Uh, I can use AI to generate a response to that email. Give the AI like a small prompt if I want to all very cool uh, and then I can also you know like close the support ticket uh, I can get notifications from the chatbot someone submits a high priority support ticket so all of these things right all of these things that I've built took me a very long time to do um, but over the years over the year I've basically got significantly better at improving the product uh, and the idea from this update is basically to build a product that people would be happy to use happy to put on their website and at the very least does what it says on the tin with a few additional extras. So at the moment, most of my competition, there isn't anybody who's doing support ticketing like I'm doing it. There's nobody who's got prioritization of support tickets or automatic, automatic support ticket responses. So I have like a few bits of advantage over my competition. The fact that the chatbot can uh, cache its responses uh, and like I say, it can respond in literally a matter of seconds is basically one of the biggest selling points because most of my competition can't do that. Uh, so that is how I got to where I am now. How did I then market this and what are my current marketing plans? And it all comes down to mass content marketing, right? So you've got two strategies. You've got the short form game and you can see here, uh, this is like one of my accounts that I marketed on. And there's a brief period here. This is when I was developing the product. Uh, not a lot was happening in terms of marketing. But now I've created multiple different TikTok accounts. So you can see here, this is, uh, let's not look at that one or that one. Let's look at some of these newer ones. So these I've just been testing recently. And what happens is I will create uh, a piece of content. Let me just draw this out over here, right? So I've, what, I've got what I'm calling feeder accounts. Uh, a feeder account will be where I produce a unique piece of content. I then promote that or repurpose that piece of content onto multiple different uh, TikTok accounts. So these are like repurposing accounts. And these repurposing accounts basically take the exact same piece of content and just post it again with uh, a template background. So you can see here, these are all repurposed pieces of content. And each of them are getting about a thousand views. Some of them don't do very well. Some of them do okay and then don't work. Uh, and it's just a numbers game to see how many pieces of content I can post and how many of that pieces of content will be successful. Cool. Where was I? So basically I've done that uh, and that is like my short form scaling strategy. And then what I do is I do that multiple times, right? So this is like two feeder accounts or I can have three feeder accounts or whatever. Uh, and the more feeder accounts that I've got and the more repurposing accounts I've got, the more views I get and the more traffic I get, the more subscribers I get uh, and the more I grow the company. However, as you've seen with short form content, there are times where it gets no views and it's not very reliable and especially platforms like TikTok, you're not really able to garner a proper following uh, and i've you know i'm building multiple uh TikTok accounts i've got multiple interests i've got like 20 TikTok accounts i've got about 20 youtube accounts i've got about five to ten different pinterest accounts 10 or 15 different snapchat accounts i'm just posting everything everywhere right so at some point the theory is it's just going to continue to compound that will turn into traffic traffic will turn into subscribers and paying customers for the software but yeah that is how i built a multi six figure software company when i can't code uh it's going incredibly well it's incredibly stressful if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe uh check me out on all of my socials if you like the idea of chat iq uh go ahead and pay for it